The scene opens in the Californian desert, where a bunch of chairs is oddly placed. A guy who appears to be an account can be seen standing there with many binoculars in his hands. Just then, a car enters the scene and starts hitting all the chairs. After dropping all the chairs, Lieutenant Chad comes out from the car's trunk. He comes near the camera and starts talking. According to him, all the great movies out there contain a special element of no reason. Like the alien in the movie E.T. was brown for no reason, in the movie Love Story, the two characters fell in love for no reason, and in the Chainsaw Massacre, we never see the character go to the bathroom and wash hands, and that's too for no reason. And the reason all these movies contain elements of no reason is that life itself is filled with no reason. He says that the movie you are about to watch is a homage to the element of no reason. Then we see that Lieutenant Chad was talking to a group of people standing in front of him. Now he gets back into the car trunk and leaves from there. Meanwhile, the accountant gives all the people a pair of binoculars each and asks them to begin watching. As the account leaves from there, all the spectators start looking through their binoculars. They see a dumping ground nearby where a car tire is resting on the ground. Suddenly, the car tire, named Robert slightly moves. He moves more and more and gets himself out of the sand. He stands in his place and attempts to move by rolling. But, he fails and falls to the ground. After a couple of failed attempts, Robert finally learns. After moving some distance, he finds a bottle on the ground. He stops to think for a second, but then crushes the bottle and moves on. Then, he finds a scorpion roaming on the ground. Robert crushes it too and moves ahead in his journey. Now, he finds an alcohol bottle and plans on crushing it too. But, when he rolls on it, it doesn't break and Robert isn't happy. So, he stands in his place and starts shaking violently. Soon enough, the alcohol bottle explodes due to the vibration. With that, he moves ahead and the spectators are in awe of Robert's powers. One spectator says that Robert had psychokinetic powers. One spectator is filming the movie with a camera, so a lady says it is piracy. And police can put him in jail for that. In the meantime, Robert comes across a can and crushes it too with his psychokinetic powers. Then he happily moves ahead and it's almost dawn. So, he rests near a bush and spends the night there. The following morning, Robert gets up and starts rolling again. On the other hand, the account has come to wake up all the spectators. He gets off his bicycle and steals some cash from a spectator's pocket before waking everyone up. Everyone wakes up and starts watching the movie, but some of them are really hungry and ask for food. The accountant just ignores them and leaves with his bicycle. Now, Robert finds a wild rabbit and decides to kill him too. He starts convulsing violently and the rabbit explodes. Then our Robert starts rolling again and reaches a road. There, he sees a beautiful woman, Sheila driving in her car. Robert starts shaking and causes the car's engine to fail. He starts moving towards Sheila to see her but gets by another car passing through. Sheila starts the car and goes her way. Robert stands up in anger and kills a crow nearby with his powers. Now we see that the man who hit Robert has stopped at a gas station to refuel his car. Robert soon finds him and kills him. All the spectators are shocked as this is the first time Robert has killed a human. Now Robert starts rolling again to leave the death site and a police car can be seen going there. Then, Robert reaches a hotel and turns out that it is the same hotel where Sheila is staying. Robert opens the door slightly and spies on her. He sees her taking a shower and the spectators are also amazed by his desires. Sheila comes out of the shower and shuts the door. She then tells her mom that she'll be staying there for the night as she is not in the mood to drive. Now Robert also gets himself a room to stay in and watches a fitness program on TV. The spectators are getting bored at this point, so some of them sleep while the rest watch the movie. Then we see the accountant who is polishing his shoes very religiously. He gets a call from someone called Master and says he'll obey him. There's a turkey in his room and he picks up knives to kill it. The following morning, the account leaves his room and goes to wake up the spectators. He wakes them up and gives them a turkey to eat. All the spectators jump on the turkey and start devouring it as they have not eaten anything for days. Only one guy in the wheelchair didn't eat the turkey and he calls the rest of the spectators animals. 
Then, a cleaning lady visits Robert's room and finds tire marks all over the bed. She checks the bathroom and finds a tire taking a shower. She thinks that some weirdo left it like that, so she throws Robert out of the room. This infuriates Robert and he goes inside the room to kill her. But unfortunately, a kid named Zack sees Robert going inside the room. Zack runs to his father and tells him that he saw an alive tire. But his father does not believe him at all, and instead sends him to get some pizzas. Meanwhile, Robert has killed the cleaning lady and is now watching a tortoise on the TV. He sees a glimpse of Sheila in the hotel, so he goes to follow her. Then he calmly stalks her as Sheila comes out of the swimming pool. Then we see Zack who has picked up a pizza for his dad. On his way, he stops by the dead body of a crow and puts some of its pieces as pizza toppings. Meanwhile, Robert jumps in the swimming pool to enjoy himself. Seeing it, the spectators argue whether a tire should float or sink. One spectator explains that a tube will float but the tire will sink. Now, a kid complains from the spectators complain that he is having really bad pain in his stomach. Soon after, all the spectators get really bad pain in their stomachs. The guy in the wheelchair explains that turkey was poisoned. Now Zack reaches the hotel with the pizza and decides to check the room where Robert went. He finds the dead body of that cleaning lady, so the police arrive at the scene. Zack tells Lt. Chad that this tire killed her but his father gets angry at him and tells him to get the tire out of the pool. There, Lt. Chad starts his conversation of no reason as to why they can't see the air around them. Zack still insists that he saw the tire go into room 16, so his father scolds him and sends him away. Then, Lt. Chad gets an alert on his watch that six hours have passed. He asks the hotel owner to leave as the poison must have taken effect and all the spectators should be dead by now. Then we see that all the spectators have died, but only the guy in the wheelchair is alive as he didn't eat the turkey. Now, Lt. Chad announces that all of them can stop the act now as all the spectators are dead. However, none of the officers wants to believe him, so he asks one of them to shoot him because the bullets are fake. He gets shot in the chest but nothing happens to him as everything around them is fake. While Lt. Chad was trying to convince everyone to go home, the accountant enters the scene and informs him that one spectator didn't eat the turkey. So now they have to go on with the act. Lt. Chad returns to the hotel owner and starts asking him questions about the murder. But suddenly, Robert kills the hotel owner and leaves the place. Then, Robert finds a mirror and looks at his reflection. He thinks about all the things he has done like killing people and rolling. Having witnessed Robert's power, Lt. Chad orders his team to catch the tire. Zack tells them that he saw the tire go on the road, so the police go to follow him. Meanwhile, the accountant has brought more delicious food for the last spectator. But the guy one wheelchair says he's not hungry and rejects the food. Now Robert stands head to head with the police and kills an officer. Then, the accountant starts telling a story from his childhood. While talking he eats the poison food he has brought with him for no reason. He gets a shooting in his stomach and asks the guy in the wheelchair for help. But the guy ignores him and the accountant dies on the spot. After rolling for a while, Robert reaches a ground where old tires were being burned. He looks at the black smoke and gets infuriated. Then three days later, we see that Robert has gone on a killing spree. He has killed many humans and the police still have not caught him. One officer finds Robert in a hotel room watching TV, so they make a plan to kill him. They tie explosives around a mannequin that looks like Sheila, and bug it with a mic and a speaker. Lt. Chad and Sheila stay in the van and try to infuriate Robert so when he kills the mannequin, he'll die from the explosives. But their scripting is so poor that Robert doesn't do anything. Now, the guy in the wheelchair comes near the police van to say that this scene makes no sense. And they should speed up the action like using a flamethrower to burn the tire. Now Robert finally gets angry and destroys the mannequin but the dynamite did not trigger, and Robert goes back into the room. Lt. Chad gets angry at this and just goes to destroy the tire himself. He shoots it with a shotgun and gives it to the guy in the wheelchair. The guy on the wheelchair is unimpressed by the anticlimactic ending but sees a tricycle come out of the room. Looks like Robert has incarnated as a tricycle. He explains that he is just a spectator, but Robert kills him straight away. Then we see that Lieutenant Chad dropped Sheila to her car. 
Sheila sees the tricycle moving and suddenly, nearby tires on the road get up and start moving with the tricycle. Looks like Robert has an army of his own now, and he plans on creating chaos. With that, the movie ends.